with Bill Butel and John Johnson, Corey McFerrin with sports, Stormfield with weather, and the Eyewitness News team. Good evening. We begin tonight with an extraordinary story. We have not heard a great deal about heroin in recent months and years. We focus mostly on crack and its terrible effects on our streets and our people. But there was a major drug raid last night, far and away the largest seizure of heroin in the history of this country. We have the story now from John Johnson. John? Bill, the drug problem that has our communities under siege was highlighted yet again last night. The FBI and the New York City Police Department teamed up to break apart an international Asian heroin cartel operating in a quiet part of town. The unlikely neighborhood in Queens, three different locations in middle-class communities like Booth Memorial Avenue and Flushing. The FBI and police seize more than one billion dollars worth of heroin. That's more than 800 pounds of smack, the largest confiscation in history. At least 17 people were arrested here in New York. 41 others arrested and simultaneous raids throughout the country and in Canada. One of those arrested was the New York kingpin of the operation, Peter Wu, the former Democratic leader of Chinatown. According to the FBI, the International Asian Heroin Trail begins in Hong Kong and Singapore, where the heroin is packed in small tires to be smuggled into the United States and Canada to major cities, including Los Angeles, Toronto, and here in New York. 800 pounds of heroin is unheard of. The largest French Connection type of case that I'm ever aware of was about 200 pounds back in about 1971 with several 200 pound seizures, but nothing uh, on this scope. The police raided this house here and they found 200 pounds of heroin. <laughs> Residents in good communities like this are always surprised when they find out that drugs have invaded their community. But in point of fact, the drug kingpins, whether Colombian cocaine dealers or Asian heroin smugglers, like to use communities like this for their stash houses, the places where they hide their drugs and their money. That's because in good communities like this, they don't have to compete with outside and other criminals who might rip off their drugs. Are you surprised that, uh, They're shocked. Very surprised. Shocked. We had, shocked. We, I've lived here 51 years. While residents of Flushing, Queens were stunned that drugs had come to their neighborhood, the FBI knew about it for more than a year. That's how long it took investigators to spring Operation White Mare and dismantle a major Chinese heroin network. The issue of the street gangs and their violence in the Chinatown community is sensitive. A proud and deeply traditional community, Chinatown has a history of success and growth since the first immigrants settled here 130 years ago. It is a community with wealth and clout. In trying to get all sides to tell the story of the street gangs of Chinatown, we found an unwillingness on the part of the mayor's office and the police department to talk openly about the problem. Both the mayor's office and the police department declining interviews, emphasizing the issue was too sensitive. Sensitive or not, the Chinese street gang phenomenon is growing. It's getting bigger. It's getting bigger. Yeah. The gang business is getting bigger. Why is that? Oh, no. More Chinese, you know, they're getting all more powers and stuff. Extortion. Extortion. Yeah. One of the reasons given by the FBI for the growth of the Chinese street gangs is the expanding power of the alleged Chinese secret societies called Triads and Tongs. Based in Hong Kong and Taiwan, these so-called secret societies have arms that allegedly reach right into Chinatown, allegedly reach right into the Chinatown hierarchy of the Chinese Freemasons. This schematic diagram correlated through FBI research and an eyewitness news Chinatown source reveals the alleged relationship of Tong to gang and their divisions. The An Leon Tong of Chinatown is allegedly connected with the Ghost Shadows Gang, the Mott Street and the Bayard Street factions. The Hip Sing Tong is allegedly connected with the Flying Dragon Street Gang on Pell Street. The Tong On Tong is allegedly connected with the Tong On and the White Tiger Street Gang. Other Chinatown street gangs have no substantiated relationship with the Tongs, but are no less violent and are allegedly involved in extortion and murder. Street gangs like the Fukchin, Green Dragons, and the Gumseng. 
In the last 15 years, law enforcement statistics have shown the growth in violence and Chinese street gang activity. Even the former mayor of Chinatown admits that the problem continues and is no longer confined to Chinatown. Well, I think always the uh, problem, not only for this community, for the community in Queens in other areas. In other areas, too. In the last six months, Chinese street gang activity has erupted in violence throughout parts of the city. There have been at least eight known Chinese gang-related homicides. The victims of this gang violence, almost exclusively, are Oriental. Very often, they hit and wound or kill or cripple innocent people. Their victims are in the overwhelming majority of cases, I'm tempted almost to say in all cases, are other Orientals, because they believe that other Orientals will be very reluctant to cooperate with the police. Also victimized by the street gang violence is the Chinatown community as a whole, a community of thriving businesses and young people who, despite language and cultural barriers, have achieved the highest success in academic and social endeavors. Despite all the positive, the violent street gangs continue to cast an uneasy shadow over the community. Where you have gangs uh, on, the, on the street and, and where you have people who are afraid of, of these gangs and you're just not going to walk in there and say no more crime. But those young kids say, uh, 13, 14 year old kids, uh, I don't think anybody can control them. You know, no one can control them. Uh,